Okay, and uh, this lecture, what I want to talk about is the concept of uh, Poisson's ratio, or the so-called Poisson effect. So, um, right now, if you look at the, this little grid I've got down here, uh, imagine you've got a little piece of uh, medical gauze, like for a bandage. So, uh, this is just to show, this to, to act like a tensile test. So, you can imagine this is a dog bone specimen. And my fingers are a tensile test machine. Uh, so, I'm going to apply a force and stretch it. Now, what I would like you to look at, you can kind of focus on the top and bottom. Uh, look at the, uh, so I'm going to pull in this direction. This is what we're going to call the longitudinal direction. Okay? And what I'd like you to observe is how the dimension of the gauze changes in the uh, Y dimension, if you will, which is what we will call the lateral dimension. Initially, it sort of sits between those two, um, in the lateral dimension, it sort of fits between, uh, pretty much right on the top and bottom of the black lines of the graph paper. And as I start to pull, what you can see, is that dimension, Lateral direction, oops, they're fractured. It contracts, it becomes small, okay? We've all seen things like this. So I use the gauze because it exaggerates the thing, right? You can actually see it contract, pull, material contracts, right? That is the plus on the right? Uh, now, this is kind of a two-dimensional test, but I really couldn't come up with a good three-dimensional test, but if this were, say, a, uh, a solid bar, you can't really do it with something like this, or like this marker, this sharp marker, and pull on it, you would have a contraction in the lateral direction, in this dimension, but also in the dimension coming out of the page, so back, really all around the diameter. So I would pull out of the board, pull this way, out of the board, out of the computer screen. What you would see is the diameter, the diametric dimension would decrease in all directions, symmetrically. Okay? So that's this plus on the map. Right? Now, mathematically, the way we describe that, and I should mention again, this happens, you can see this is purely an elastic process, right? Gauze is an elastic material. When I remove the load, it stretches back, there's no permanent set, and the uh, deformation in the lateral direction also returns. Okay. So this uh, plus on effect has the following mathematical. Looks like poison, but in fact that's named after a, a French um, elastician. From, uh, 19th century Poisson. And so again, we call this, this is the pole direction, this is the uh, longitudinal direction. This is where we have force. This dimension here is lateral. Okay, lateral. Now, uh, the strain in the lateral dimension, okay, the strain in this dimension, is removed. 
related to the strange strain in the longitudinal direction, in the direction of the road. Okay? And it's a material property that does that. It's used, we typically give it the Greek symbol nu. So it's spelled that way. It's pronounced nu. W. But it looks like a sort of script B. And there is a negative sign here because uh, when you stretch in one dimension, you get a sign change, uh, in other words, traction in the other dimension. So when I pull the longitudinal direction, it's a positive strain, it's stretching. The strain in the lateral dimension is a negative strain. Now, I can't really do it with gauze, because it's more compression so well, but if you sort of compress it, there's actually a sort of you know, a negative strain in the longitudinal direction, a compressive strain. The strain in the lateral dimension will be positive or it will extend, okay? So this is a material problem. And uh, typically, it's in the range of 0 0.25, 0 0.4. You know, typically at most. Uh, for steels and aluminums, 0 0.28. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that uh, if you strain... So if the Poisson's ratio is about a third, what that's saying is, this, well, as I pull this, if I have a strain of one in the longitudinal direction, that means the strain in the lateral dimension is minus one third. Okay? So there's still a volume change, but uh, it's related as follows. Okay? So this is a big box equation. Typically, Problem stated, given the strain in the longitudinal direction, the direction of the pole, and then using Poisson's ratio, we got the strain in the other directions. All right? Also, sometimes you'll see it defined just dividing through by the strain, lat well, dividing through by the longitudinal strain. You can also see that the material typically is written as follows. Again, you can see. Always going to be less than one. Actually, that from thermodynamics, you can show it as less than one half. But the lateral strain or the longitudinal strain, change the sign, gives you the material property. Okay, Poisson ratio. That's the way it is. All right, so let me mention I, I can't, I wish I had a better, I need to find a good three dimensional piece of foam, but I really don't have it. But uh, let me try to sketch it and see if it makes sense. So if one were to have a block of um, rectangular block, block rectangular plus okay. we'll pull on it in this direction. There's a force. In other words, this is longitudinal direction, you will get a strain in this direction, okay? Now, to get that strain, you know uh, cross-sectional area, this is governed by Hooke's law, right? So, the longitudinal strain we know is equal to the stress divided by Young's modulus. In this case, the stress is going to equal the force over the cross-sectional area. That's the undeformed cross-sectional area. So this gives us a P on A P. Okay, that's typically the way the problem's going. You're given loads of initial geometry. You can then determine the strain in the pull direction, the longitudinal strain. Now, in this case, you will get two resulting lateral strains. 
They'll be equal. The strains will be equal. You'll get a strain in this direction. Okay. Let's call this. Lateral, and you'll also get a strain in this direction. Now, assuming the material is uh, isotropic, meaning it has the same response in all directions, which is for this class most materials that we deal with, those strains will be equal, but they will be both related to the longitudinal strain through cross -line. So you get a number here, plug it into here, give it the material constant. You can figure out the strain in this direction. Now, the actual change in dimension, uh, for example, if we were to call this dimension initially A, call this dimension B, all right? Those dimensions will change. They will change a different amount because of the fact that the initial length is there. But if you wanted to figure out the change in A, in the A dimension, delta A, that's just going to be the lateral strain times the original length. So that's just the strain is change in length over the original length. Now, in the other direction, delta B, in this dimension, this dimension is changed by that same lateral strain by the original dimension B. So you can see even though the lateral strains are equal, right, the dimension change can be different because of the dimension length. Other times we will also have situations where it is a circular cross section. Again, this is the direction of the load P, alright? You will see corresponding strain. Well, so here is the longitudinal strain. Right? So this gives us this direction. Longitudinal strain. Right? Again, it's going to be the force over the cross-sectional area over Young's modulus. But we will also get uh, a contraction. This dimension is also right? but actually every dimension diametrically will change. So what you'll see is that the rock spins, stretches by the longitudinal strain, the diameter also gets smaller by the lateral strain, right? This strain here. So that's the diametric strain. This changes the diameter by that amount. Again, that's going to be equal to minus nu times the longitudinal strain, the strain in the pole direction. You have to change the diameter. That's the, the lateral strain, sorry, this one, times the original diameter. So the amount that the diameter changes, right, is the strain in that direction multiplied by the Okay? And that's the way it works. So, a lot of times we'll kind of look at it as a 2D effect. Really, it's a 3D effect. Uh, it's elastic. All right? There also is a Poisson effect when you do plasticity. And you can see that especially with the uh, necking. Uh, in the tensile test video, you can see necking when there's plastic. That's a Poisson effect when you plasticity. Uh, don't, you know, this is the big equation. I guess sometimes students get confused as to what's lateral and what's longitudinal. Again, uh, you can memorize terms, but I don't think that's really an effective way to do it. I think a better way to do it is to think in terms of a concept. So try to think of, you can even forget the terms, right? The pole in one dimension gets longer. Uh, perpendicular dimensions, then there is a 
strain of opposite dimension. Okay. So negative. Now that strain for normal engineering materials is always going to be less than the strain in the longitudinal direction, the whole direction. Okay. And if you remember that Poisson's ratio is a number less than one or less than one. Less than one. Then this relationship is obvious, right? You know, this is less than one. Sign change. So the strain in non-pole direction, the lateral direction, is equal to the material property, about a third, times the negative of the strain in the pole direction. Okay. It wouldn't be the other way, because if that's the case, if this were in the transverse direction, the lateral direction, then strain in the lateral direction, strain in the non-pole direction greater than the strain in the longitudinal direction. That conceptually is not what happened. Okay? Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about with the Poisson effect. But it is important, and I think it's another one that uh, you should have this image in your mind. Like say Poisson's ratio, Poisson effect, this image needs to be pulled. Whoops. Well, Chuck stay on, right? Pull it and then change the dimension in the opposite direction. But also, don't forget that actually it's a 3D thing, so you actually have to change. You can't really see it here, but actually, if I do this, the thickness of the gauze changes the action also. Dimension out of the end. Okay? All right. That's the plus on it.